There he is. He's listening. I'm just hanging out. There he is. Well, uh, we just got the updates from Richard. Is it's pretty exciting, huh? Um, can you clear something up for me? It looks like it sounds like the last thing on the list. Initial distributions, whatever you see here, is totally not real. Just testing. I assume that means. You might be using some like randomized data or no, we're gonna use real data. Um, I think he just doesn't want people to think that it's real money or real tokens, whatever. It's test net. Got it. Um I mean I know we're gonna get questions in here like I thought I got five million sacrifice points. How come I didn't get that? Yeah, exactly. And so we'll look at all those and make sure the math is correct. I, I'm certain we're going to see stuff like that. Um, but that's why we have test now. So. Yep. Okay. Do you, any of you guys know when um, the official sacrifice point list will be released? That is still unclear. We're we're still deciding because currently people are still sacrificing. What do you what do you what do you think about people's current people sacrificing still? What what are your thoughts on that? Um I have opinions. That I'll, that's, all, that's all I'm looking for. Just put. <laughs> uh, I I know people that have sacrificed personally in the last few days. Um, sorry, I'm taking my daughter to gymnastics. Uh, walk to the other side, sweetie. Uh, but for the train. Sorry, what's that? Out yeah, no, just just listen to your to your answer on that. I don't know. I, I I think it's hard to tell if it's a good idea to sacrifice now or not. I mean, I don't know what the multiple is right now, but I mean, if it's you know 10x, I mean, sounds good, but it really depends on the price during price discovery if it was a good idea or the, not. The rate is closer to like 60 so, points per dollar. Yeah, I, I have 10,000. Yeah, I haven't been. Yeah, yeah. It's like over 150x the, the, the original SAC prices in the first five days. So instead of getting 10,000 points per dollar, you're getting like, or even more with the bonus, because you're getting like 60 points. Did you get yeah. sticks? Hey, shoot to the moon. Can you mute yourself out? I'll be there. You want me to be there? I'll be there or not. Why are you hitting? But see, you you I back right back in the, Yeah, I just got back in the car. So if there was a question, I I didn't I didn't. Well, just you know, I, I was just wondering what your thoughts were on it. But it, you seem like you, you know, it's not that not that big of a deal for you. Just was wondering what your thoughts might be on the sacrifice. I think it's absolutely at insanity at this point. Just insanity. Harry. What's going to be crazy is after snapshot 
uh, has been made public, I'm sure there's still going to be some numpties who are going to keep on sacrificing. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't understand why, why it just doesn't just take the site down and just, you know, at some point, like, what's the, just, it's, it's over, like. It is because, you know, some people would probably freak out if they put all their money into it and the site just vanished. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I know I haven't discussed it at all with anyone. Our, our main and primary focus has been getting Bolt's chain out, making sure uh, everything's stable and can scale, stays up, monitored, all that kind of stuff. A lot of the magic on the back end that people don't see or realize are even there is what we've been focused on. So. Yeah, so I'll ask the, 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 the golden goose question. Do you think we're going to be seeing it, you know, February, January, February, something around there? Uh, all I can say is I was hoping it would have been deployed yesterday or the day before or the week before. So um, we want it out as fast as everyone else does. So I don't, there's no actual date planned. And I, I know people have thrown out rumors and stuff of, of dates, but uh, I can for sure say there's not a date in mind. Now, Richard might have a date. He just hasn't communicated it with the developers. So I, so I speak for Richard. The only the only update the devs gave after testnet launched was that to not expect the launch of Pulse before the last month of Jan December, which to me easily puts it into January, February, potentially. But um, yeah. yeah, there was a lot of unknowns then. So it, as we've uh, brought in talent and uh, so, yeah. I mean, the, the, the tweet that Richard just made is, uh, should be a good indicator. I mean, we're confident enough to release testnet version two. And I hope to not have to release a testnet version three. Three. So a golden question to me is, do you feel the progress is going so well it's possible for November, December? Uh, is it? A, yeah, it's totally possible. Um, yeah, I you, I, I don't want to steal any thunder from Richard, but I'll tell you that, um, and, and which is why I'm holding holding back is because really he should communicate a lot of this stuff and will communicate a lot of this stuff. Uh, but I'm very excited with the progress I'm seeing. So, and, and the stuff that's going on. So, um, sounds, sounds I mean, I, I'm excited to the point where it's hard, it's, it's difficult for me to sleep. So, <laughs> I'm excited. Okay. Uh, what was the tweet that he that may help me just getting on. Just getting on. Uh, testnet version two will be uh, going live here shortly, the next couple weeks. So, Brett, uh, is that including when you're enthusiastic? Are you, is that including like having a working Uniswap fork up as well too? Because I, that's something that I was hoping to be able to see myself. Well, in uh, we've had some community members in the dev channels that have posted uh, some progress there, and uh, and they're doing a very good job with that. I mean, I'm using their Uniswap front end to test test it. Nice. So, oh, I mean, yeah, that's. I nice. mean. I, I, we're trying to keep this as decentralized as possible. 
Uh, and I, I think I, I sent in today's call, private call, I sent uh, Richard a screenshot of how many nodes we have on testnet right now. And that's public information. You can go figure it out yourself, but we've got 395 nodes on testnet. On testnet. And yeah, that's throughout the entire throughout throughout the entire world. Uh, and it's amazing. That is really, really awesome for a test net. I mean, you think about Ethereum, how long did it take them to get 200 nodes? How many years? Right. So um, really awesome progress there. And and uh, I guess what I was trying to say there is for Uniswap and bridges and everything else, the more decentralized that can be and not rely on us, the better it is for the ecosystem. Right? We want this to be decentralized. Does that make sense there? When, you know, when you're, you're copying over the system state and then yeah. it, that market fixer fixes all the liquidity in the pools. The liquidity's got to go somewhere, right? Which which will be the Uniswap version on Pulse, correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. So I mean, it's got to be there. I would assume. <laughs> um. That that's a good question. Uh. I, honestly, we don't know how that's going to work out. I mean, literally, these are just, this is just a ledger, right? And uh, yeah, we're, we're hard forking Ethereum. So the, we're copying the, the ledger will be there. We'll just go from a, an Ethereum block to a Pulse chain block. That, that's all we're doing. And uh, all the liquidity pools and liquidity is still there. It's just on a different network ID, essentially. So I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, it's going to be, I, I think it's going to be awesome. I think there will be value. I don't know. So, I, there won't be value to anything until there's a bridge, I think. Uh, so there would have to be oracles as, to, as well, right? For some of these projects to work. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. We we have well over. I think we are well over four hundred, maybe three, maybe it's three hundred. I don't know the exact number, but we've got more than a few hundred developers on Pulse Chain uh, indirectly, right? So these are just community members working on Pulse Chain. We see transactions all the time. I, I literally keep it up at my house and I see different transactions going through and different people submitting different types of contracts. Um, so uh, I'm pretty confident that people have oracles looking and are using oracles and developing that for our blockchain. Wow. And when I say our, I mean all of us, not like the core team because we're all part of it, right? So, um, yeah, this is, this, it's, it's really, really awesome stuff. Pulse is obviously, you know, you have a core team, but they're, you know, just from the people I've spoken to personally and people who've even come into the chat, um, there's a whole, there's a whole plethora of devs from even other blockchains um, and other projects that are, working on pulse uh behind the scenes building things now which is what you're speaking to that's oh, yeah. not like, like tons of them yeah exactly i mean <laughs> we've got so many i i uh submitted a poll or merge request today in gitlab and i we have community members that are reviewing my code and saying hey you had a typo here I did, I spelled Pulse wrong. But uh, it's just really cool to know that it's not our core team that's looking at the changes, right? And so they're, they're paying attention to our code as much as they are their own code for Pulse. It, it, it's just really amazing, it's awesome. So 
I'm the, blown away. Two hundred two hundred and ninety five nodes in this short amount of time. That's very that's a lot. That really is quite impressive. Three, uh three hundred and ninety five. Shit. Three hundred and ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I found that out because I just got done uh building in the support for auto discovery so we can be completely decentralized. So if Amazon decides to shut down our stuff, it will still continue to run. Um, and how that works is we go interrogate all the nodes, starting with our own and looking at everyone connected to them and then traversing the network all the way through. So there's actually probably more, but I only let it run for 30 minutes. So when we, um, when you guys restart the test net, is the, um, you know, what we call the fixer bot going to go through and try to rebalance the uh, liquidity pools as well? Is that what's going to happen uh, on the next test or, um, uh, for us, uh, really, it's just going to be getting the validator, uh, code in there so people can stake, uh, that. That was never supposed to be like, we never announced that. Someone just found the app and started saying that it was broken, but we had already fixed it weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> so really we're just focused on making sure the validator stuff works. So uh, the top 33 validators will work. Um, and that, that the math is correct for Pulse PLS. Uh, and then on the back end, we're going to be testing. What are we testing there? We'll be testing the 30 day clawback on the PLS to make sure that it happens correctly. So, uh, other than that, hey, I mean, uh, what's, it's running, it's super what's stable. 195? Right? That's how many nodes that we've discovered that are running our fork. So the way that that's discovered is uh, there's, a, there's a list of forks on the chain. So you've heard of the London fork, right? Um, mm -hmm. You have a CR, you, you hash all the, the forks together. I'm, I'm a very high level simplistic view. You hash all of them together and you get the final fork or final hash. Um, and because we have most of Ethereum uh, and we're hard forking off of Ethereum, the final hash will actually be different than the rest of the network. Uh, so uh, we've got at least 395 nodes running our fork or our hash, uh, our block. And it, it was actually like 400 and something, but 395 are completely synced. The yeah, others are still sitting. a lot of radar. You're not even doing anything, yeah? You're sitting around, yeah? Sorry, was that for me? I think that was just an open mic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I was like, yeah, I'm so driving. <laughs> if I, if I, if I were to run a node, um, like, what would I do? Like, what, what steps would I have to take? Well, uh, in the one, the, the version that's being code reviewed right now and that will be merged in and will release uh, for testnet version two, um, mm -hmm. all the config is built into the code. So you literally just download the release uh, and you execute the code uh, with a flag saying that you're on pulse chain testnet and it will just start working. It, it'll be that easy. There's no config files or Genesis files or anything like that. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm running Ethereum node right now, but it's, it's on Avado. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, I don't know if it's uh, like they have like a, a it's pretty simple. It's like plug, plug in type of thing. Yeah. Do, yeah, they, the, do you know if. Uh, current. I, I haven't heard of Envato before. I don't even know if I said it right. So, 
No, you said it right. Yeah, it's Abado. A V A D O. Ah, Abado. That helps. Um, I don't know what that is. Is that a hosting service like AWS or? It's kind of like Dap Node. Have you heard of Dap Node? No, I haven't. Do you want to drop me a DM with these and I'll research them? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, I'll I mean, if there's Thank anything. You, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I was yeah, just wondering. If there's anything we can do to make it easier for people to run nodes, I, I definitely want that. Because yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, like, that just, that like, just really, made it more decentralized. Uh, yep. Um, I mean, when they, I mean, they're pretty um, close with the Ethereum Foundation, you know, um, the, the group that um, started Avado, where you can, you just like literally, it's kind of like pretty much like a mini PC and you just run Ethereum node on it. Uh, you just open open up the app and you run it. It's very easy. Um, so, like, I, I was wondering if if we could do that for Pulse Chain. That would be pretty cool. Maybe. I mean, if it's if it's like really easy for them to add, or you just have to say, "Hey, here's here's my binary," and then they make a release. I don't know. You know, I'll, I'll do, yeah. Just drop me a DM with them, and I'll I'll take a look and yeah. see if I'll, I should reach out. Yeah, to I'll them. send you. But it, it, it's Thank really you. easy to run on any computer, including Raspberry Pi, as long as you have enough storage. So I, I, it's really just double yeah, click. Yeah, that's the thing. Or, yeah, yeah I really mean, easy. right. Uh, the reason I'm running it on running it on Avado is because my PC is pretty old. Well, I have a Mac, but it's pretty old, um, and it doesn't have enough. Uh, you know, like Ethereum. If you run Ethereum, you probably need at least like four to six terabyte. Uh, so I use that, uh, uh, but like, well, I guess you could run a light one, node. one like, and a half know, terabytes. The archive node that. Yeah, the archive node yeah, you can uses about ten one. or eleven terabytes, but just a normal node, a full node. Uh, like, if you have a disk with one point five terabytes, you're going to be fine for at least a year or two, probably. So, I mean. So you're gonna be fine. I'm almost done bootstrapping a new node okay. with uh, the new code, and it's up. A, it just passed one terabyte. So, and it's just about done. It's about ninety-seven percent complete. Hey, I got a novice question on uh, Scanda Pulse Chain. Uh, when you're looking sure. at the block times. You know, when it first yeah. fired up, it was just firing off three second blocks, three second, three second blocks. And then it went up to like eight seconds. And there's obviously some things going on there. I think it's right now it's like running at like four. What What is the what is the reason why it'll uptick and downtick in terms of the, the block, the block times? Uh, yeah, ah. so uh, very good question. Uh, to resolve any concerns, it will be a three second block time. Um, the reason why these ones are kicking up is one, that error in the validating validation validator contract that we fixed a few weeks ago. Now that contract uh, is a system contract. And so that's why we're waiting for testnet version two to redeploy it. Um, but in our dev net that we have private, it's running just fine. Uh, the second reason is, so that bug has been fixed, which contributed to this. And then the other thing is we only were running three validator nodes. And if you know anything about consensus, once mm -hmm. one, one yeah. out of the three. Whoa, whoa, meet yourself out, please. You, you, you have the thrashing. Yeah, you have two people trying to decide and there's no tiebreaker until the third one comes back. And so, so that that's really, the minimum we should have been running with is five. That's kind of industry standard minimum. And if we ever get down to five, it, it's like all out emergency for us. We, we should never get down to five. Uh, but we'll have 33 on mainnet. 
and uh, in testnet version two, I believe we're going to at least have five, if not more. Uh, so we always have a tiebreaker there. So even okay. if it goes okay. down to like four, we can, be, we can still do tiebreaking. So on private dev testnet, it's running three second blocks. Yeah, yeah. It has nothing to do with the load. I mean, you you see that blocks are being signed and generated with zero transactions. Um, so, I mean, there's like almost no load on these servers. Uh, so it, it's completely just the consensus protocol and how that that's working and the thrashing that's happening there. Awesome, man, thank you for but, that. Yeah, all the validator nodes are signing the blocks as fast as they can. And you have to figure out who wins. And when the one that's in rotation is unavailable or, um, yeah, it, it just gets, it just gets really dicey on the communication, especially when they're so close to each other in the same region. So it, it's not unique to us. Uh, it's actually not even unique to the blockchain. It's unique to just consensus in general, uh, especially in technology. So. But it actually matters the geolocation of each node based on that? So you can go, uh, a TCP packet can travel the world uh, in less than 100 or 120 milliseconds, like at worst. And our block times are 3,000 milliseconds. So uh, it really doesn't matter where the node is in the world. Does that make sense? Are there any major hurdles that you that you uh, have encountered that you think might take a little bit longer that are on the kind of wish list? Mm, for launch, for MVP? No, I don't see major hurdles. Just making sure math is correct. Uh, I mean, we got a lot of other good stuff going on, but I, I won't, I'm not gonna mention that now. That's, that's oh, a richer yeah. part type deal. But, the, um, uh, what about the regular uh, staking functionality of Hex itself? I know that the website had uh, wasn't really updated initially to handle switching. Ah, over yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually don't. I know who's supposed to be working on that, and I don't know the status on it. Okay. Uh, but I do know it's like. Just, just from my own development, I know it's only like two or three lines of code that need to be added. So it, it, it's not difficult. You basically just have to point it to the test net. Right on. Did, you, did you say many devs working on different parts? Um, what do you mean by that? Like just now? I thought I, thought I heard you say earlier there was like a couple hundred Devs, um, some directly, some indirectly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we do, we have a very uh, our team, our core team is pretty tight. It's small, uh, but publicly out there, there's a lot of devs. We we have a private dev chat room, and we have a uh, public dev chat room, and uh, we've got. A, I, I mean, we're seeing a lot of numbers in there and just with the activity we see that they're developing so, do so you have, have to hard know if anybody's there. working on like the website like translation for different languages website oh well no i don't think we do but okay, internationalization so. we we definitely need that um Man, that's awesome. Let me write that down. Yeah, that's, that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, I have a lot of I friends mean, from like uh, Brazil and everything. My Spanish friends uh, that probably would need that. I'll see Brazil. if I can find Você de Brazil? Eu falo um pouco português. Ah, que legal. 
Você também. também. É muito legal. <laughs> Faz muito tempo. I, I lived there I, like 20 I, years ago. I lived there for two years. <laughs> That's awesome. Sao Paulo and Galaga. LDS. LDS. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you coming in here and sharing what you can. It, it does a lot for, uh, for the chat, man. Appreciate you. Oh, you're welcome. I, I, yeah, that, I just like your feedback and listen to you guys sometimes. So. Your feedback makes it sound like you're a lot further along than some of the test net uh, testing has suggested. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, there's just a lot there. Um, yeah. So some of these things I, are just on like private test nets or uh, no, so, non-disclosed I mean, websites? I, well, a lot of like issues that have been reported are are usually just uh, a majority of them are issues with uh, other things that are not pulse chain, um, like MetaMask. I, I I try to go through them and document them and point them to the code that is the problem. Um, but uh, there. There's a couple things in testnet right now that um, we're working around just like everyone else does. Uh, you, you have to understand that the Go Ethereum, which is what we're based off of, uh, which is what Binance Smart Chain is based off of as well, and basically a lot of the Ethereum forks are. Um, the they were built around the assumption that people will be running this node in their basement, not in a, a centralized ish way where it needs to have proper health checks, it needs to be able to um, have proper uh, garbage collection in the memory. Like, there's just a whole bunch of junk inside of there. Uh, they figured some guy, if they have a problem with their node, they'll just restart the process or reboot their Raspberry Pi. That that was the assumption they made when they built Ethereum. Um, so I think our largest challenges that we've had, we're working through those, those type of things. And basically making it so I can sleep at night and the other developers can sleep at night without being paged to fix something. Um, so I, I think that was our has been our biggest challenge. When when um, we had a question just before you you popped in regarding yeah you know like for example the London fork and you know when when Ethereum does something to the to the network how that affects what you have to do with Pulse you have to go back and retool everything how, how does that work? Um, we have to go back to the London fork. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't quite grasp that. I because it was breaking up. Yeah, no. When 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 Ethereum, like for example, they just did another update the other day. Uh, oh yeah. Right. So how does those updates that they're doing affect what is going on with the development with Pulse? Does it does it set you oh, set oh. No, I mean, with London Fork, it did because Binance Smart Chain, and this, I mean, this was even before, like, I was on the core team working. Um, I mean, the Binance Smart Chain stuff was 18 months outdated compared to Go Ethereum. So, uh, as a lot of you guys know, I worked through most of, what was it? August, the last couple of weeks of August. And that was me saying, all right, well, we need to get on to bring in all the changes that have been made over the last 18 months on Go Ethereum into our stuff so that we get all the fixes. We can support the London fork. We don't have to work through that. Um, 
And so that's what I spent time on. And I figured it would probably fix whatever bug, sync bug that we were running into. It didn't, but it did bring a whole lot of goodness to us. So when, when they make changes now, I mean, because we're up to date on everything, it only takes us maybe an hour or two to look at the diff and, and either add it or not. Um, I mean, I'll, if it's performance related, we'll add it. Uh, feature related, we probably, if it makes sense to add to our chain, we will, but likely like docking into Ethereum 2.0 and stuff, we, we could care less about that because we're not doing that. Uh, so we wouldn't bring in a feature. Like that. Wow. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple to keep up to date. And uh, like I said, there's a lot of other cool stuff happening um, that Richard will get to announce. And uh, yeah, it, it's really exciting. We've got a lot of exciting things coming up, uh, not just around Pulse Chain, but everything. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> so, hey, man. Hey, uh, hey, uh, you can, just a question on your, um, you mentioned you got 400 or 300 uh, devs working on it from different projects. Can you give us an idea of how many projects or communities that represents? I don't know exactly. I do know like the Uniswap thing. I know someone is working on a bridge. They were uh, reached out to me in, uh, yesterday or today um, saying that that was almost done. Um, whether we use it or not, I don't know. It, it'll be a community thing. Um, like anyone can submit stuff to the blockchain. So if it's there, it's there. Um, I've, I've just heard of... Uh, I can't speak, no one's like working directly with us on those projects. I've just seen a number, maybe 12 or 13 projects out there that developers are working on. Um, I mean, from giving, uh, there's a loan project going on. I don't know, there's a lot of things going on. I, I haven't been tracking them very closely. I just know that our dev channels are have a lot of people in them, if that makes sense. Yes, thank we're, you. We're, I mean, the core team is solely focused on, on launching Pulse Chain in the core software, right? So we, we try to help people where we can, but we are laser focused on the Pulse Chain. Are you any closer uh, to you choosing what bridge you might have for Ethereum to Pulse at launch? I have not been tracking that. I am in the channel, um, but the I have I have not been keeping up to date on that. Pri primarily because we don't need it. That's not part of my my MVP for launch or the, the devs I'm working with for launch, right? Um, I want a bridge at launch, but I haven't been keeping up with that. Sorry. Okay, that, that's all right. Um, I think that many people probably hope that it's part of the MVP, so as not to launch in a kind of walled garden type of way. Um, yeah, I mean, ideally that, I, I don't know if that's a deal breaker for launch. Um, like, I personally don't think we need one. It would be a nice to have for sure. But I think there's value in a chain even without a bridge, personally speaking. So, well, how you would, wouldn't you need either a bridge or a fiat on ramp in order to bring new economic energy in? So, anyone who hasn't sacrificed uh, or missed that window would pretty much be locked out of transacting sure it. i mean that that's one way i mean ethereum didn't launch with a bridge right but people still used it same with bitcoin true uh, but it was a completely uh clean chain at that point here you have if the sales pitch is 
we've got all this existing uh you'll be able to use all your coins anything you have on ethereum in your wallet you'll be able to control the the forked copy over on pulse but let's yeah. say you weren't involved in the sacrifice you don't have gas you can't really use it or swap for it or you know you're kind of waiting banging on this drum in my opinion the longer that time goes on without a bridge at launch the less likely people will ever come over because it becomes an unfair launch at that point yeah i i mean i don't know i i can see value on the chain with or without a bridge i mean you have on ramps that can just i mean if you if and this is my opinion only i i haven't discussed this with anyone but i mean you you look at the uh, USDC, right? If they want to participate in Pulse Chain, they can build their own on ramp to it. Um, it doesn't need to be like an Ethereum bridge, although I think an Ethereum bridge would be ideal. Uh, but I, I think that really anything's possible i i was in disbelief when i saw 395 notes running our fork like that that is just amazing to me like yeah that's I, quite I, high I, compared I to where i thought to, yeah i think we're going to be shocked and surprised at what the community does because really it the blockchain is just what we all agree on it's all consensus and if we believe there's value there there can be value and and then it, all it takes is one entity to come in and say hey look we're going to be an on ramp off ramp for fiat and immediately it has value that you can realize into fiat right so i'm not sure that i that this is why i don't i don't feel personally and I actually haven't expressed this at all with any of the devs or even Richard Hart. But personally, I don't feel like a bridge is an MVP, that we need to have it. Um, but, and, and that's just how I feel personally. So, uh, If it does become one, then, then it does. Um, but right now, that's, that's not my role in Pulse Chain. It's really just the core software right now. Would you might find Unless the value? Do you think you might find value in asking the community of users who sacrificed that might consider whether that's a a uh, part of the MVP? I know it's no expectations and everything, but I I hear you on the whole consensus. Yeah. You know, if we agree that it has value, sure. But yeah. the strength of every blockchain comes from the strength of its network. If it's just yeah. twenty thousand hex users. That isn't a case for a strong network, in my opinion. No, I, I agree. I mean, I, I I think you're you're right there. I I just don't think it will be very long before we have a bridge, whether we're working on it or not. And I do know Richard has people working on it. It's just not me. Um, and I do think launching the chain sooner. If we had to hold up the chain for six months to get a bridge or a year, I don't think that's a good idea. Well, here's the other thing. Uh, if you don't have a bridge and let's say yeah. your, your stakes comes due for hex, okay, you can end stake and swap for what? Pulse. Uh -huh. Pulse has, it's not, it's not like it's a stable coin. Uh, so, if there's no bridge and no stable, then how, you know, it's kind of questionable whether what value you're able to capture if you can't send the value back to a fiat on ramp somewhere. So, yeah, there's, there's you know, a lot of moving pieces. I mean, there's the swapping mechanism, there's the oracles, there's the, I mean, there's a lot of moving pieces on what brings values. It's not just a bridge, right? So a, a bridge will bring over users, but essentially we brought over every single user already. Um, 
with all the Ethereum wallets. The whole system state has been brought over. So, um, I mean, new users, brand new users, it's literally just creating a wallet and uh, th th at that point, they do need an on-ramp somehow. <laughs> right. yeah. they need an otherwise they aren't, they aren't, they're remain a no-coiner. Uh, yep. Off ramps so, will be just as important, though, if if you want to capture well, value from your oh, stakes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 100 percent agree. I yeah. I I'm, I don't disagree with having. Uh, I I think we must have bridges at some point. I think we must have an on ramp and an off ramp at some point. Um, I just don't know if it's required for MVP. Because as soon as MVPs launched and you, you start seeing activity on the chain, I mean, we're already seeing unbelievable activity on the test net. I mean, once we start seeing activity on the main net, it's not going to be too long that a community member, uh, whether they're a professional company or whoever, builds a bridge because they're going to want to capitalize on it. Well, and, and Who wouldn't just want the thought. To capitalize? Just a thought against an immediate bridge. Um, it occurs to me that having no bridge at launch makes it possible for Pulse to um, have a longer and have a have a greater takeoff if people don't have as much ability to dump for fiat or anything. Yeah, that I can't speak to. I don't know, but I mean that could be the case. Just, just an idea. It's just a theory. Uh, yeah. You know, if we're, we're doing pros and cons on both sides, that could be a pro yeah. for no bridge at launch. I mean, but, yeah, there's uh, a lot of different theories there. Yeah, um, but I mean, also it could be a, a discouraging factor because if people say, well, I can't, uh, you know, I don't have a way to turn this back to fiat, then it could discourage some people as well. You know, it could, it could be a double-edged sword. It definitely could go yeah. either way. I'm just... I'll let the death talk. I don't know. I, I, I'm looking at Ethereum 2.0, and anyone that stakes in Ethereum 2.0 right now, they're going to launch, well, I think they've officially pushed it back to July now. I think, I think maybe we find out this Friday. But um, they keep pushing back the date for launch on 2.0. But after they launch, let's say they launch in uh, July, the people that are staked currently on Ethereum 2.0, and there's a lot of money staked there. There is zero code, no on or off, or I mean, there's on ramps, but there's no off ramps for them to get out of a stake yet. There probably won't be for another two years. So, yeah, but what, uh, like on why Coinbase, would you, why would you once, stake, right? once the once the branch launches on Coinbase, I think the plan is to be able to get out before that two-year period am i wrong about that all i know is the developers do not have code in there to get stakes out so if coinbase does something they're doing it themselves they're not doing it with the ethereum code they're doing it in their exchange got it that makes sense so on the ledger it will not show people unstaking it would be something that they're recording in their own exchange. So, so Richard, so Richard lot, always talked money. about. What's that? I was just going to say, you know, for the longest time, you know, a bridge was part of the MVP. And so my question would just be, what what would have changed between then and now to where he would say, well, I guess that is a, a compromisable piece um, as opposed to it actually being minimum viable? Well, I I think he's mentioned it in their, his live. In fact, I know he's mentioned it in his live streams um, while he's either been on the road or at, at his normal location, wherever that may be. Um, that we ran into the hurdle where uh, the private, what the admin key thing, and we can't do atomic swaps on the bridges. So that that kind of changed. That that was the kind of changing or pivotal moment, right? 
and uh, and I think that uh, in one of his live meetups, he's like a bridge is not required for MVP. So um, I mean, that's where that would have changed. If that, like, I'm not, I'm not announcing anything that he hasn't said there. So how do you get your money out if there's no bridge or put money in? Well, you would need a fiat uh -oh. on ramp. Exactly. Yeah. There, there will. How do I say this? Uh, capitalism will ensure that there is a way to get money in on or off ramp because whoever comes up with it is going to be heavily rewarded just from fees. There, there's not a world where there's not a bridge or an on or off ramp. It, I mean, in theory, there could be, but in theory, there could be a bank run on anything, right? Theoretically, things might not happen, but in reality, things will happen, regardless if we do them or not. It's an, it's an open ecosystem. Does that make sense? This, this is why I'm not worried about it and why I don't feel like that it should be an MVP. Because whoever it's figures a, that out stands to make a ton of money. It sounds like uh, it kind of follows the whole no expectation of the work of others while having an Correct. expectation of the work of others. Well, yeah, you so, should have no expectation of the work of others, but that capitalism kind of drives people to do things. I, I, I never expected... I never expected 395 nodes to be running today on testnet. Maybe 100, maybe 50, right? Um, but people find value in Pulse Chain. A lot of people, apparently. And so they've all built these test nodes uh, that they're working with and doing things with. I mean, there's benefits to running your own node, especially if you're developing something. Um, hey, one of the questions so that, that we always thing. get uh, what what yeah. one of the questions we always get? I don't want to. Uh, I don't know how much time you have, because this is kind of ad hoc I anyway. Like, yeah, I have like five minutes, and yeah. really, I'm not. You know, nothing I say is authoritative. It, of it's not Richard. The, the next the next question. I yeah, I get that. The, the next question I have that I wanted that we often get is is there, is there any penalty if you're staking or if you're delegating to a uh, one of the validators? If they get slashed, do you also get slashed as a um, delegator? Has that been finalized yet or determined? As a, you mean as a staker? So, if you if you uh, delegate your stake to a validator, right, and they get slashed, yeah, I mean, I, um, I is I, any of your principle at risk or is it just that you just don't oh it's i don't think it's principle i don't know i have to double check the code but i do know that uh, that validator his rewards are slashed right so he's not making yeah. as much the the thing the thing that always comes up is what if a validator you know uh they have a certain amount of money that they're staking, mm -hmm. but then they also, since it's pseudo, pseudo non, pseudonymous, uh, they set up a different account that they're, you know, earning rewards on their own validator with uh, by delegating to it. Uh, you know, they could be earning more rewards with a massive um, stake to that validator and not incur the penalties then. Yeah, I, I'd write these questions almost feels like a free lunch yeah i'd write these questions down um i'll talk to the other developers and richard hart see if we can do like uh i think it would be beneficial for the community to have some of these questions answered in a form like this i think it'd be really fun uh I, so 
why don't you keep a list down, uh, DM me and we can kind of plan that out and I'll ask Richard Hart if we can do that type of thing or not. So I, I, I think he'd be all for it. So cool. I, and I think it'd be helpful to you guys, especially you guys. I mean, I drop in here every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I love listening to you guys. So it's really fun. Well, yeah, we appreciate you having the time that you took uh, tonight with us. And uh, yeah. we have had several questions out in like the PLS. Um, there's like a PLS plan room, but they're not organized and kind of unordered. And some of them have just gotten lost. So probably have to yeah, I just throw keep like a better a like or, check this out. Yeah, I yeah. keep a Google Doc and pin it or something like that. I don't know what you'd want to use there. But um, it, it'd be really good. Something organized is better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and really, it's a community effort. And the more we can get the community involved, the better. I mean, it this is this is just an awesome opportunity. So to be a part of all of this is it's it's really fun. All right, guys, I gotta. I'm playing mom today since my wife's out of town and uh, I got to get the kids to gymnastics and stuff. So. But I might Good stay stuff. in here and just continue listening because I like to listen to you guys. I did not plan on speaking, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just hey, caught hey, you. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Thanks, man. Hey, Good uh, from hey, work. Hey, you should just know that we. Know, I, I just sent you the uh, link for uh, Avado. Um, cool. So, like, you know, if you could find out more more about it, uh, just let me know. Yeah. And and just from our standpoint, like, we all listen to you guys. Uh, we may not respond, uh, but we 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 pay attention to the community quite a bit. So, um, you guys, that's why we're impressed. I'm impressed. Um, a lot of good ideas, especially like the internationalization. Holy crap. How did we not figure that one out? Right. So got to work on that. <laughs> so, Brad, I, I have a recommendation like that's easy to implement, I think. Um, yeah. Is it possible to have the GitLab, the, the symbol on the Pulse Chain website so that newcomers could actually like see the active development that's going on there? When they go on the Pulse, yeah. Yeah. Pulse Chain website, yeah, I think that that's totally because, possible. Uh, like so just, next to the just Twitter, a link back to it from social. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll, like just the GitLab I'll symbol next the to the Twitter and Telegram. That would be great. Yeah, I'll talk. I'll talk to our dev that does that. Um, have him add that link. So, um, even just awesome. even just updating the Pulse Chain Com Twitter account to uh, put that in the profile would be helpful. Oh, okay. I've got action items. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just sorry, figured that gonna, one's gonna, the fastest. I'm gonna I'm gonna leverage you guys here for my memory. Can you just DM me those action items, well, like whoever gave me them, so I don't get yeah. like a ton of tweets or DMs. Um, I think I allow people just to DM me. Um, yeah, it looks like it. I see people DMing me. So, uh, um, cool. You guys are awesome. I'm just going to hang out in this room. Got to go grab my kids. But, uh, yeah, you're attached to my car, so I won't hear you guys for a while. Thanks for your work. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Yay, you're welcome. I mean, Richard put together a really good team, guys. Like, uh, the talent is really amazing. I'm I'm super impressed with the talent, and he doesn't. I I don't know if he's talked about it much. Maybe he has, but um, I I'm I'm really excited to work with these guys. And I'm I'm a Silicon Valley guy, so uh, I've worked with a lot of high caliber people. Richard's put together a really good team. So, all right, with that, I'm gonna mute. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Awesome.
That was great. I'm going to try to grab that uh, timestamp on Hex Radio app if I can. Yeah, good idea, man. That's, That's cool. Holy shit. Stuff. A lot of good information. <laughs>